Starting off the news this week, the co-founder of the Israeli company called Space IL has revealed that their spacecraft that was meant to land on the moon in April but crashed was carrying thousands of tardigrades that are probably still alive on the moon. Tardigrades are tiny little animals sometimes called water bears, which are notorious for their ability to survive in almost any scenario. They have been dehydrated and placed in artificial amber, but are still technically living and would have almost certainly survived the impact, meaning that there are now currently thousands of life forms on the moon. They will not however be reanimated unless reintroduced to water, so don't go waving at the moon because you're just going to end up looking like an idiot. Starting off the paleontology news this week, we have a very cool paper that has described some fascinating ancient predator-prey interactions. Originating from the late Pliocene age rocks in western Panama, fossils of an extinct baleen whale have been uncovered that preserved bite marks from at least two different shark individuals of the genus Cacarodon, the white shark genus. Although it's not possible to identify the whale down to the species level, this evidence of an ancient shark attack provides the researchers with a unique vision of the trophic interactions within this marine ecosystem that existed at a particularly significant point in history, the transition between the Pliocene and the Pleistocene. Next up, an incredible discovery from the fossil record of New Zealand, the largest parrot that has ever existed. The species lived about 19 million years ago and managed to reach heights of about 1 meter, beating the living kakapoo for the title of biggest parrot ever. Named Heracles Inexpectatus for its large mythical-like body size and for how unexpected its discovery and indeed existence is, this bird had an incredibly powerful beak that likely allowed it to feed on a wide range of food sources, with it even being suggested that the animal could have fed on other parrots. This discovery not only adds a great deal of information to the evolutionary history of these animals, but also illustrates how different the fauna of New Zealand was in the past compared to the creatures that survive there today. Also this week, a brand new genus and species of Anomalocarid was described, the Hurried Cambrorasta falcatus. Named from fossils found at the famous Burgess Shale locality in British Columbia, dating back around 506 million years, the species name of Falcatus was actually given due to the apparent similarities seen between the shape of the animal's carapace and the shape of the Millennium Falcon. Cambrorasta possessed claws that had what appeared to be a series of rake-like structures projecting forwards, which were possibly used to sift through sediment to trap prey within the spines. The creature also had a circular mouth filled with teeth that is iconic of the grouping it belongs to, and the carapace potentially enabled the species to push through the sediment on the seafloor as it moved. Hundreds of incredibly well-preserved fossils are now known of this taxon, and its description not only reveals some very cool bits of anatomy, but also indicates more about how the Herdeid anomalocarids diversified and adapted after the Cambrian explosion. And finally, just a quick bit of news that we missed last time, the massive femur of a dinosaur was unearthed in France recently, from the late Jurassic Age and Gilles Charente excavation site, at a length of 2 metres. This femur belonged to a sauropod, and it's particularly well preserved for such a large bone, with scars where muscles attached even being visible. A very exciting find, hopefully we'll hear more about it one day soon. Oh, and just one more thing happened this week, the Benji Thomas channel reached 100,000 subscribers. In case you didn't see the stream on Friday, all of us are so incredibly grateful for every single person who supported us throughout our time here on YouTube. There's so much we want to do next year, including merch, Patreon and more. Oh, and of course, 7 Days of Science 2.0.